Hello, and welcome to coverage of Custom Standard Casual Matches. I'm Caillou, and today we're going to be watching a match between Oko, who is on Bad Tree Districting Combo, and Sol Invictus, who is on a uh, five-color Crest Ramp. So essentially, both these decks uh, uh, ha play in an interesting way. Oko's deck is a deck with like a fair, grindy game plan, which can then backdoor into an infinite combo. While Soul's deck is a fast uh, deck w with like a cheat out combo using the titular card Crest of the Waters, but also has a backdoor into a fair plan of just ramping into huge threats. Um, right now, uh, Soul does not appear to have um, Crest itself, and next turn will only have mana for Titanic Crusher. Uh, needs one more mana for an Anku. Hasn't played out, uh, I guess played a redistricting to ramp, but doesn't have uh, either of the mana dorks online yet. So we'll need at least another turn to be able to play Anku. I think Anku, uh, if resolved and if it gets to start attacking, uh, loses Oko the game. But Oko does have a Wander the Unknown in hand, um, as well as like a decent grip of like fair. Like Talia, Splashback Elemental, Elemental are both like f good fair cards. Um, and Contra of Bounty is one piece of the combo. So I think Oko is in a pretty good position here. So plays Sun Petal Groove and is going to yeah, tap out for Splashback Elemental. Um, I think this means next turn Oko, no, no, I'm sorry, next turn Soul just goes uh, on end step, cracks both of these fetches. Uh, then next turn just plays Titanic Crusher to kill the Splashback before it can grow too big. And then. Soul has a threat, Oko doesn't. So Soul tapping out for this does have Anku mana? I thought Anku oh Anku is six mana. For some reason I thought he was seven. Yeah, that works. Uh, next turn Oko untaps and just wander the unknowns it though. Um and that does mean that Oko gets in one swing with a splashback elemental. Uh and next turn if Oko Oh, actually, but yeah, this forces Oko to not be able to play Talia this turn. Um, actually, wait, could... So, plays Lakeside Park. No, because uh, if Oko ha had, like, uh, all of these lands untapped, uh, could have been able to, like, play Talia uh, and then flicker a land and then play Wander the Unknown. But because Lakeside Park needs to tap another land in order to come in untapped, that doesn't work. So tapping three for Talia, um, I think that this is a mistake. I think letting uh, Soul keep Anku is just bad. Like, Oko doesn't have the mana to be able to cast Wander the Unknown right now. Because it's one white. So I guess Oko's plan is to grow the Splashback Elemental, but that doesn't even matter because what's going to happen is next turn Soul... Uh, untaps, plays Titanic Crusher, Crusher is bigger than Splashback, kills Splashback, um, attacks Talia with Anku, um, forces Oko to sack uh, uh, the State of Affairs and the land. I mean, it just... I think that this is a huge punt from Oko. Like, you never want to let Soul keep something that has like an attack trigger on the battlefield. Like, this is just so greedy for no reason. Okay, swinging out with the Splashback Elemental. And yep, attacks with Anku. Um, Oko's forced to sack uh, Splashback, State of Affairs, and the land. So in response, uh, Oko's going to activate the superiority ability of State of Affairs to basically cantrip with them. Still puts Oko in, like, an awful position here. Yeah, because Talia dies, Splashback Elemental dies, Oko's entire board is gone, also has to sack a land. And all of this could have been avoided if Oko had just not been greedy last turn and wandered the unknown to the Anku. So, interestingly, I guess I'm going to save the Titanic Crusher for another threat? And I'm... Okay, and I'm also surprised by... Okay, I guess didn't have uh, other green mana to play the 
other two dorks. So Oko top decking into protect the farm and off of the uh the cantripping from the uh last turn hits redistricting and this is from cantripping from state affair, sorry. Hits redistricting and tropical channel. Yeah, um if Oko plays tropical channel here and then plays redistricting, um we'll be able to like use it as ramp. Um or actually no, but uh, I guess the thought maybe redistricting plus Contra of Bounty is the infinite combo. Um, so just save redistricting. Yeah, play Wander, kill Anku, uh, which is what Oko should have done last turn. Um, and then the redistricting uh, can be played next turn. And then if uh, Oko hits Contra of Bounty as well, then that's just gas. Doesn't yeah again, and killing the Anku there would have uh, let Oko uh, be able to inspirit Contra of Bounty onto the Splashback Elemental because otherwise Oko just straight up like does not have the mana to cast Contra of Bounty. Unfortunately for Soul though, Soul is just hitting all the mana dorks in his deck. Um, I think if you're Soul, you just have to go on the aggressive like. Play Titanic, play Titanic Crusher, kill the soldier, um, swing in with the Sylvan Ritualist, and then play, um, and then play the other dorks. Cause I don't think Oko's deck has a wipe, and then just just building up a board and then trying to get over him is just a good time. So yeah, it's gonna Titanic Crusher, kill the soldier, swing in the Sylvan Ritualist. I think yeah, I think you also play. The other dorks, because um, if you play uh, the other dorks, it takes the clock from three turns to two turns. So, yep, double Humble Shepherd gets two sheep as well. Um, the sheep are also relevant in case Oko starts going off of this Protect the Farm. They act as like good blockers. So, Oko top decks into his Zula of Rides. Um, could hit a Taken for Questioning off of this, like Zula writes Taken for Questioning, grab Titanic Crusher. Soul still has uh, basically six power on board after that. Um, redistricting is nice to have, but then again, without any way to play Contra of Bounty, Oko can't go infinite. Could just like redistricting and then manually like grab back the. Okay, he's gonna redistricting and then maybe like manually like just sack it right now and then bring back. Two fetch lands, or like sorry, a fetch land and a Sun Petal Grove, crack the fetch land, make three tokens, protect the farm, and then that buys Oko some time. Okay, so you're gonna play Spires, sack it, replay it, so it gets four uh, protect the farm triggers here, four soldier tokens. Um, and I think with that, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, it'll be. Uh, only three because the second time isn't sacking it. But with that, uh, if Oko top decks another land, uh, we'll be able to hit uh, Contra of Bounty. Um, additionally, could also just uh, Zula of Rights for another redistricting. Like, yeah, could Zula of Rights redistricting ramp next turn, and then the next turn uh, play Contra of Bounty. Zul of Rights for another redistricting and then go off. But yeah, right now on Soul side of the board, it's kind of iffy because Titanic Crusher is big but gets chumped by these soldiers. Um, so Soul needs like something with Trample or needs to hit like a Nito right now. But yeah, I almost feel like last turn Oko maybe like tapped wrong for that because if Oko had left another green mana up, would have been able to Zul of Rights for another redistricting like that turn itself. Meanwhile, Soul hits a Zul of Rights off the top of his deck. Um, I don't know what this could be in here for, interestingly. Like, I know, like, maybe, like, Zul of Rights for redistricting, or maybe Soul has finally put in, like, Contra as, like, enchantment threats from his deck after all. Now I'm just going to hit redistricting off of this, and then probably thin Soul's deck a little bit. And then he yeah, plays out the other Sylvan Ritualist. He's just going to try, I guess, doesn't want to lose uh, the dorks. So he's just going to try to keep applying pressure with the Titanic Crusher. 
I almost feel like it would be better to swing out with the dorks, though. Because even if they trade with the soldiers, um, you're at least, like, forcing Oko to, like, lose his board faster so that you can maybe get in with Titanic Crusher next turn. Or if Oko chooses not to block, um, you're just getting in a free 4 damage plus each turn. On end, Oko cracks the fetch for a tropical channel. That does trigger protect the farm again, so Oko gets another soldier token. Um, who doesn't hit another land, but another protect the farm is pretty spicy if Oko chooses to go uh, protect the farm, Zula writes into redistricting, and then just do that whole thing again, build up a hu another huge board. Um, also now has six mana to be able to sack protect the farm to like pump everything. So I think just building up a huge board now, chumping one one uh, Titanic Crusher, and then next turn just going huge with uh, side by sacking the protect the farms is probably a good play. Um, actually, I haven't calculated how much damage that would do, but and I think the sheeps and the dorks might be able to block so that Oko won't get lethal. So maybe just like build up a huge board and then uh, next turn do the whole. I will hit an I will hit contra of bounty plus redistricting play. Interesting. Oko is playing another Zulif rights. I wonder what this could be for. Um, I'm actually kind of, yeah, I'm kind of confused because I feel like, oh, taken for questing, uh, killing the Titanic Crusher? Except Oko doesn't have the mana for that. Oko needs, uh, uh, I guess, like, is it you may cast it this turn? Yeah, I mean, you may cast it this turn. So it has to redistricting for, sack redistricting first in order to get the mana to play taken for questing. Um... And I feel like Oko should have saved the second Zulif rights uh, to be able to play redistricting uh, next turn uh, if need be. Like get another redistricting and then play Contra Bounty. I also think that playing another Protect the Farm here, given that uh, Oko is going to just make a bunch of soldiers is the play, because, like, you don't really care about Titanic Crusher since you can just chump block it. Um, and I think playing Protect the Farm plus Redistricting to just make a bajillion tokens just gives you more ways to block Titanic Crusher. It gives you, like, like a lot more breathing room, and it makes it so that Soul can never tap out, because then you can just, in response, Protect the Farm and then just yeet him. So yeah, it grabs lands with redistricting, then it taken for questing the Titanic Crusher. Still think this is the wrong play, but yeah, Oko himself saying probably a misplay, and then just going to end. And I yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Um, but Soul doesn't have any cards in hand and doesn't and needs to top deck a threat here basically. Hits a rootbound crag instead. Not good. So Oko has stabilized here, um, but again, still doesn't have like a way to win a next turn because uh, without the second Zulav rights, uh, doesn't have doesn't have the opportunity to go Zulav rights redistricting, and then uh, and then just uh, next the turn after that go contra of bounty, and also not having a second protect the farm to buy more turns is definitely an issue. Okay, so hits a forest, so can play Contra of Bounty, but then still doesn't have uh, any way to play lands from Grave because the redistrictings are gone. So plays the forest, plays Protect the Farm. Uh, I think, again, that ordering was bad because you want to play Protect the Farm first and then play the forest so you get two soldiers. Um... And is tapping out for Contra of Bounty. Um, do I agree with this? Um, maybe. I think generally, though, I I don't. I guess it is one more body on the field. But 
Oko's out if soul like top decks like a Sahai Fire Beast or something is to just uh is to combo off. And playing Contra Bounty makes it liable to get to getting like shot and killed. Especially since Oko has enough money, or not money, Jesus, enough mo mana to uh, play redistricting plus Contra in the same turn if uh, Oko happens to top deck that. But instead, Soul just top decks in their, another land. Soul knows that next turn, uh, Oko is just going to crack the Protect the Farm, pump his entire board, and then swing out and then do it again the next turn. So, yeah, Soul just really didn't have a way to stabilize there. So we're going to a game two. Okay, so let's look at these openers. Uh, Soul has like the perfect hand of Farseek turn two into Jabaya, and then to Tit Titanic Crusher as a backup to kill anything scary from Oko. Meanwhile, Oko has Redistricting plus Protect the Farm, which is a really solid line. Also has Sylvan Ritualist to ramp. Um, I do think so. Jabaya is really good here because. The uh, what it on flip it turns into uh your boy. Let's see, can I show related cards? No, I can't, unfortunately. But it basically transforms into a 3 3 indestructible that animates a land that you control and turns it into an XX trample haste, where X is a number of differently named lands you control. The important part of that is, of course, the trample bit because it means that uh, it can get over the tokens that protect the farm creates. So I think if you're a soul, you just play Rootbound Crag, Farseek, and then just high roll into Jabaya next turn, and then hope that Oko doesn't have removal for it. Which, currently, Oko doesn't. Also allows... Uh, well, soul basically has all five colors here, but if there's anything that soul wants to fix for, like I think double blue for auspicious to be able to hard cast auspicial sphinx makes sense. So like a Spindling Nimbus or a Tropical Channel. Tropical Channel, probably, because more green never hurts. Yeah, Tropical Channel. Ooh, Oko hitting Azula of Rights. Um, that does mean with redistrict... I think, like, a redistricting Sylvan Ritualist, um, Azula of Rights. The Sylvan Ritualist is important because it's a thing that uh, Contra of Bounty can be inspirited onto. So, and Protect the Farm... Two has the payoff, so the combo is kind of coming together here. You know, Soul top deck into it redistricting, but I think it doesn't care about that now. Just gonna windmill slam the Jabaya. Yep. So if you're Oko here, I wonder what you do. Or I guess, um, so protect the farm, and then probably play a land. And then next turn, Zula of Rights were taken for questing to kill Jabaya. I think that's probably the line that uh, Oko is going to have to take. The problem is, what Soul can do is uh, uh, play a planes, uh, and then just like animate that planes, trample through the soldier. Um, and then still have enough mana to cast either Titanic Crusher, or I think likely here Auspicial Sphinx is what Soul wants to hit. And yep, on upkeep, transforms to Jabaya the World Shepherd. So yeah, if you're Soul here, I think you just play the planes, tap out for Auspicial Sphinx. Um, the Sphinx uh, lets Soul dig for... Uh, yeah, the Sphinx lets Soul dig for more like Jabaya's, or like Trample Threats, or like and I guess flying here on Special Sphinx helps versus Oko because, again, dodge the soldiers. But just stuff that can dodge ground blockers. <laughs> and yeah, and grabbing another Auspicial Sphinx off of it. Why not? And start of combat is going to animate the Hidden Harbor. It's a 6-6. Six, six. And yeah, just swing out with both. So Oko is going to be taking at least 6 damage here. Or actually, no. Uh, can crack the Ascending Spires and then block the Hidden Harbor. But then, at that point, Oko would take 5 damage. But yeah, Oko's deciding just save the Soldier token. It's going to block Jabaya, take 6 from the land. And Oko's definitely strong on the back foot here. Like, normally, 
going like next turn Zula of rights, grab Jobaya, and then start using and then next and then the turn after that start using Talia to flicker taken for questing to like perma exile stuff would have been the play. But now that Oko is like down on life, can't really do that effectively. Um and doesn't really have access to enough answers to be able to to keep kill like if Soul just keeps playing a threat per turn, Oko can't keep answering the threats per turn, especially when Souls like threats themselves are gonna keep digging for more and better threats. Um I don't know if Oko's deck has any wipes out of the side. Um I also don't know if like uh if Oko like has a potential here to like combo off um before Soul can just take this game. Anyways, Oko is not actually gonna be okay, I guess all of uh no Oko had the off yeah, Oko had the mana to Zul of Rights for Taken for Questing, but instead is going to Talia. Interesting. I guess it does save um, Oko from some damage, because uh, Soul needs to point the land, uh, needs to point the beast at Talia, and then um, at that point, like, Oko can just take that and then can chump Jabaya and then still have a soldier left. Of course, Soul's Auspicial Sphinx will still get through, but I don't think uh, that matters much. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, because still has a land drop return. Plays the Vibrant Locale, tapping out for redistricting. Um, now, even with the Beast token, won't be able, or like the Beast land, won't be able to kill Talia. So we'll need to point both the Beast and our Special Sphinx at Talia to kill her. Okay, I'm just going to end. Um, does not have enough mana, unfortunately, to next turn uh, Zul of Rights into Contra Bounty to go infinite. So if you're still here, I think you just um, yeah ta uh, tap out for another Auspicial Sphinx, um, play the Spindling Nimbus, uh, and then just kind of animate one of them, attack. I think you want to, because Talia can be scared. I don't know how scared Soul is of Talia, actually. Could just go for the throat and uh, attack Oko's face, because technically does have like a two-turn clock here if uh, Soul just goes for the face. Okay, grabbing Sarasa off this auspicial sphinx is probably not the best. You definitely do want like something more impactful. Like, let's say, a World Elemental or an Anku. But it works. So we're going to animate the Spindling Nimbus. And yeah, now actually now it is a 7-7, seven, seven, so just swinging it at Talia just auto-kills Talia. So yep, swinging the Spindling Nimbus at Talia, Jabaya and Auspicial Sphinx at face. So we'll get to grab another card off of Auspicial Sphinx here. So yeah, Oko chumps Jabaya with one soldier, Talia dies, and Soul gets in with Auspicial Sphinx to face. Weird. Why did Soul get Rootbound Crag to hand? And then bottom the Auspicial Sphinx? Yeah, I don't get that at all. Why not just grab another Auspicial Sphinx? Like, it's not like Oko could have, like, Banish. And I think a land here... Is the thought that like next a land allows Soul to go um, Titanic Crusher next turn, have a land to animate, and also have a land to be able to far seek or redistricting? Like I don't think that's as important. But yeah, now Oko is going to probably Zula rights for Taken for Questing and then take out Jabaya. Um, Soul still will have a two turn clock just from the Auspicial Sphinxes. So yep, taken for questing on Jabaya. Um, still doesn't have a way to block or kill these auspicial sphinxes. So that is definitely deadly in two turns. Maybe Soul's thought of not taking the auspicial sphinx last turn is that it wouldn't change the clock on Oko. But wouldn't you want to uh, have backup in case, in case let's, let's say Oko has like another Zul of Rights or another Taken for Questing, wouldn't you want an, a, like a backup way to guarantee killing Oko the turn afterwards? 
Yeah, I just, I don't get bottoming the special strengths last turn. Anyways, interestingly, Oko is going to start, I guess, since Oko can't block um, the uh, Special Sphinx, is going to swing out with the Soldier, get one damage, and another one is going to get blocked by the Special Sphinx. So if you're Soul here, I think you just go to combat, swing out with both Special Sphinxes, so never mind, okay? Um, is going to tap out for Sarasa first. I think that doing this main one is a mistake because there's really no reason to do it main one, and then you just and you want to get more cards off a of special sphinx to see what your options are. And it's gonna voyage. Why? Oh, I guess I can untap four permanents with. I guess like it, it takes away the downsides of Saras's ability. It still feels like you want to like hit a threat off of the auspicial sphinxes and then like play it. So that even if Oko top decks uh Yeah, like you would have wanted to play this world elemental, for example. Or play like I don't know, like any other th yeah, like this Heart of the Gods would have been super great. Like just some threat um that you can guarantee killing Oko with next turn. I guess World Elemental doesn't guarantee killing Oko, but then if you play Heart of the Gods this turn, and then next turn goes Sarasa into the same Voyage line, you guarantee killing Oko no matter what Oko top decks. Of course, Oko didn't hit anything relevant here, and so is going to lose this game, but still, I, I don't agree with that play. Oh, is, is Oko going to Talia plus one to take, plus one exile to take, like flicker the taken for questioning? Return Jobaya to Soul, and then take the Special Sphinx. I don't think that changes anything though, because Jobaya will still transform on upkeep. So Oko's doing a whole lot of stuff, like flickering a land with Talia, playing re like cracking redistricting to grab fetch lands to make more tokens to protect the farm. None of it matters. Like, none of it matters. Because next turn, Soul just untaps, swings in with both the official Sphinxes, and then kills Oko. And yep, Oko realizes that and concedes. So we're going to a game three. So I think looking at Oko's hand here, it has a three lander, but. Wander the Unknown, Taken for Questioning, Double Zula of Rights, I think is an amazing hand to have. Because it means that, um, no, Maul? You have answers to Soul's like first two threats, plus ways to grab more answers to Soul's threats, or ways to backdoor into combo, plus a decent number of lands. Why would you mull that? Like, you're not going to beat Soul in a fair game, and you're not going to beat Soul without interaction. Like, okay, Essence Scatter is okay here, but you still, like, like lots of your hand, like, Splashback basically does nothing in this matchup. Talia is okay, but again, it basically does nothing in this matchup. Um, but meanwhile, um, Soul has, like, a wonky two-lander, but then uh, can turn to tap out for Humble Shepherd, and then try to do stuff from there or redistricting works too redistricting is probably better because uh it allows soul to hit jobaya turn uh, three if uh, soul ends up hitting another land notably though oko by that time will have the essence scatter to be able to counter jobaya and i think the problem for oko here is that i think countering jobaya definitely makes sense um, it's just that, like, Soul's hand is just full of threats which get around Oko's board now. Because Heart of the Gods, once you hit Paradise, has Trample. Special Sphinx has Flying. So even with just, like, one answer, Oko can't get there. I guess Zul of Rights kind of counts as another answer because it can grab uh, a Taken for Questioning. Um, but I don't, I think it, it's not good enough that it makes the other fair cards in Oko's hand worth it. So grabbing Tropical Channel, okay, and hits the luckiest Rootbound Crack off the top of the deck, otherwise wouldn't have been able to 
play redistricting this turn. So plays redistricting gets to grab back the fetch, um, and then next turn plays Zephyr Peak, plays Jabaya. Um, if Oko decides to tap out for Talia or Splashback here, or Zula writes her for redistricting, Soul can just like uncontested get Jabaya on the board. Double Zula writes does mean that Oko can just like even if uh, Soul taps out for Jabaya. Um, on the backswings, uh, Oko can just Zula of Rights were taken for questioning. So yeah, Oko's going to tap out for Splashback Elemental here. Probably in hopes that next turn can Talia start flickering lands to grow the Splash Black. But yeah, Soul is just going to Jabaya and then grab another land. That means... Um, Next turn, uh, Soul can drop either an Auspicial Sphinx or more likely a Heart of the Gods, because Heart of the Gods, um, the turn after that, Soul can like Paradise it, and then once, once Soul like reaches Paradise, um, the there's no way for Oko to deal with this other than chump blocking it with a huge creature, which you know is reasonably possible since given gr uh, Oko can grow Splashback Elemental or can just make like eight Soldier tokens. But it's Heart of the Gods is still just like insanely good versus Oko's deck. So Oko's gonna be tapping out for Talia, probably flicker a land, grow splash back. Oh, and flickering the fetch is also really good because that means Oko can crack it this turn to grow splash back even bigger. Yep, grow splash back into a 4-4. Four, four. So I guess last turn didn't have the ability to Zillow of Rights were taken for questing because Oko didn't have another land, unfortunately. So now Soul does get um, access to Jabaya plus land. Um, and I think so probably, if you're Soul, you probably... Uh, Humble Shepherd? What? Oh, I guess Soul doesn't have access to another blue to be able to play a special Sphinx here. Which is why Soul should have grabbed a blue X land off of Jabaya. But yeah, um, I think the ideal line would have been if Soul had gotten the blue land would be Auspicial Sphinx into next turn Heart of the Gods and then the turn after that Paradise and then just basically kill Oko from there. Oko does hit the land though, so now this turn can go Zul of Rights into Taken for Questioning, Exile Jabaya, and then I think that's a good line because then so and then Oko can just keep hammering in with the Splashback Elemental. And then Soul only has this uh, Humble Shepherd. Splashback is also notably outside of Sahai Fire Beast range now. It can only be killed by uh, by a Titanic Crusher. And even that is like will rapidly get out of hand. Yeah, Zula rights were taken for questioning. And see, the problem is, Soul would have, uh, if Soul had just grabbed a blue land with Jabaya, would have been able to play Auspicial Sphinx last turn and have another threat. But Soul doesn't. So now Soul is just incredibly on the back foot. And Soul is essentially on a two turn clock here. Um, because. Next turn, Oko can play redistricting and grow the splash back even further. Oh, Titanic Crusher, the top deck of gods. Exactly what Soul needs right now. Because now Soul just plays Titanic Crusher, yeets the splashback elemental, and then just holds on for dear life. Yup, here he comes. And this boy is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So now it's completely flipped the situation. Oko does have another Zul of Rights to like uh, untap Taken for Questioning um, the Titanic Crusher. But at that point, Soul just has three more threats in hand, which Oko just doesn't have an answer to. I mean, Essence Scatter counts as an answer, but then since uh, Oko has to tap out uh, here for the Zul of Rights, it won't be able to answer Soul's next threat. And yep, here comes Zul of Rights Take Two. For Protect the Farm, interesting. Um, 
I guess the thought is protect the farm. Uh, play, play a land, play redistricting, and then just make a bunch of tokens so that you can block Titanic Crusher. Um, that works. You know, the only problem with that is, of course, um, Auspicial Sphinx plus Heart of the Gods kind of just gets there. Hmm, so if you're soul here, do you just pay six for... So I guess the question is, um, yeah, I think, yeah, can pay six for Heart of the Gods and then tap Humble Shepherd to uh, grab redistricting? Yeah, okay, so it's going to Heart of the Gods, or I guess can just start paying for Paradise right here. Um, I think that since you can't reach Paradise until next turn anyways, a uh, Humble Shepherd plus Hidden Harbor for redistricting is the better play. Because, you know, ramp plus deck thinning. How many fetches? Yeah, it has one fetch, but we can still get stuff off of that. And yep, tapping out for redistricting. How much mana does this give soul access to next turn? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10. So it's one off from being able to play another Heart of the Gods and then uh, also Voyage. If Soul does hit a land off the top of his deck, though, next turn can just play another Heart of the Gods and then have uh, 5 mana from Humble Shepherd plus 4 lands to be able to Voyage and then swings out with 2 hasty 8 eights. Yep, so double fetches for Tropical Channel and Spindling Nimbus. You know, swing out with Crusher, which I think Oko's just gonna quickly chump block with the Soldier. Not messing with that. So on Oko's turn here, has the potential to create, uh, with that, has the potential to create um, four, still four, uh, Soldiers. Um, which won't be enough to effectively chump block a double Heart of the Gods, or even like one Heart of the Gods. But I guess may not be cracking this redistricting. May just crack the fetch land, and then next turn crack redistricting? I don't know. Actually, it does have the Essence Scatter for um, the second Heart of the Gods. So Soul will only get to swing with one next turn. But yeah, it's gonna sack redistricting. And then fetch twice for the four landfall triggers. Um I and then that gives uh, Oko a total of five soldier tokens. Um does also have the mana to be able to crack protect the farm next turn. So what does that mean in terms for soul in terms of having to have blockers up? Um, soul needs to have uh, hmm. this is actually this actually turns this situation a lot because uh, Oko has the potential to deal 15 damage next turn. Um, and with that, uh, Oko basically, that doesn't need to like block much. Like an oh, actually eight. How did Oko get the sixth soldier? So yeah, Oko only gets four soldiers there because um, redistricting gives you one more land drop, which would have normally let Oko um, loop the fetches. Um, uh, so that so because Oko already had a fetch, so then crack that fetch gets one token, um, and then replays the fetch twice to get five. But because Oko played um, a planes earlier that turn, gets one less. Um, this means that Oko presents 12 damage next turn. Uh, so if there's a way for Oko to safely uh, avoid this damage, then... 
Okay, so gonna auspicial Sphinx. Uh, Oko, I think Essence scatters the hell out of this. I mean, a Titanic Crusher plus Heart of the Gods presents exactly 17 damage. Um, so Oko is forced to uh, block at least one of them. And the problem with that is um, having to, like, if Oko had made five soldier tokens last turn, um, Oko would have been able to uh, crack, like, just chump block Titanic Crusher, let Heart of the Gods through. And then um, on this on the crackback next turn, uh, crack protect the farm, swing out for twelve, uh, kill soul. Oh, actually, I guess heart of the gods having vigilance kind of precludes that. Um, yeah, actually, I don't think there's any way for Oko to kill. Um, unfortunately. If Heart of the Gods uh, didn't have Vigilance, then that line would have worked. But yeah, now Oko can hit for a maximum of 9 damage onto Soul. The problem is um, the... How, how does that work out? Like, if... Uh, I don't think there's any way for Oko to really win here, because Oko's empty-handed. Um, Soul has another heart of the gods. The yeah, it's just over for Oko. And yeah, that's it. So Soul Invictus on Crest Ramp takes it two one over Oko on Bantry District and Combo.